his two decades in power had been one of the most prolific periods of construction in Roman history. By the time of his death, harbors, temples, bridges, and basilicas in every corner of the empire bore his name. It would be nearly a century before another emperor would commission one of Rome's last great engineering achievements and send the empire spiraling towards self-destruction. In the decades following Hadrian's death, the Roman Empire remained the dominant force in Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East. Its emperors maintained absolute authority. Its armies remained invincible and its architects continued to inspire jaw-dropping awe. Their crowning achievement, a behemoth complex of Roman baths, was commissioned in 212 AD by a corrupt power monger named Caracalla. He rose to power the old-fashioned way, through murder. Caracalla's late father, Emperor Septimius Severus, had wanted his two sons to rule the Roman Empire together. But Caracalla and his brother Geta hated each other. After their father's death, it was only a matter of time before one eliminated the other. Caracalla struck first. Caracalla had him killed right in front of his mother, which seems to me a horrible, horrible thing. Geta's name was erased from memory, not only from inscriptions, but Geta's image was chiseled out. They erased the name, but they leave the erasure. We know that the state has taken um, steps to eradicate him, and we should remember that lesson. During the reign of Caracalla, blood once again flowed through the imperial chambers and the empire was back in the hands of a tyrant who ruled by fear. The rule of Caracalla is characterized by that of a man, emperor, who places himself above man, within the sphere of the gods. Caracalla wanted to leave a legacy that would secure his fame for the ages. As the Colosseum had for Vespasian, the Forum for Trajan, and the Pantheon for Hadrian. He had to prove himself as worthy of the imperial power. He had to show that he was even better than his father. The new emperor would attempt to cleanse his past sins by building a bath complex. For centuries, baths had been an integral part of daily life in Rome. They centered around an arrangement of hot and cold pools. But the baths were more than just a place to bathe. They were country clubs open to people of every class. After you finish work, you're going to go to the baths for a couple of hours to unwind, to listen to politics, to, to get a rub down, to have a manicure, to have a haircut. There were places to work out. You could wrestle. And then, of course, you could go to the baths themselves and go to the hot rooms, sweat a lot. And you were surrounded by magnificent structures that were sheathed in marble and decorated with statues and they were for the benefit of the average person. This was not just a structure for the rich, this was for the average Roman citizen. Baths had always been a popular construction project among Roman emperors. Previous rulers like Nero, Titus, and Trajan had each built extravagant baths in their own name. And Caracalla was determined to trump them all with the most massive bath complex ever built. The imposing shell that remains today is a testament to his success. As you can see from 
what remains all around us, there was a series of giant rooms in which there were swimming pools the size of Olympic pools. There were bathing pools at different temperatures, private bathing rooms, and areas where people could mix and mingle. The central building was larger than St. Peter's Basilica and trimmed from stem to stern in gold and marble. Its floors were covered with intricate mosaics, fragments of which still remain. Surrounding the main building were open spaces for track and field events, separate buildings containing libraries, shops, restaurants, and even brothels lined the perimeter. The complex could comfortably accommodate nearly 2,000 Romans at a time. This small town would have been heaving with people every day. These enormous rooms are a testament to the engineering and skill of the people who built it. They surpassed any of the baths that had been built previously. Caracalla's laborers worked overtime to complete his baths quickly. To build such a magnificent bathing facility in five years, there would have been between five and 10,000 people working daily for five years straight. The buildings seen above ground were just half of the story 